Hi, I'm Naisha McCauley, and you're watching AccessTV.org. Hello, everyone. Welcome to For the Greater Good with Evelyn Richardson. Today, I have a special guest. His name is William. I prefer to call him Bill. William Hosley. And he is here to share with us some information about a project that we both find there in, um, in common, and that's the um, Old North Cemetery, as well as um, the most historic neighborhood in Harford and some other things around history. And we'll start this dialogue by getting Bill to share with us about. Oh, first, hey, Bill, thank you. Thank hey. you for coming to the great. show. Always great to see you. It's great to be on access with my friend Evelyn and I'm looking forward to having a conversation about a place we love. Wonderful, wonderful. So Bill, first tell us something about Mr. Hosley. Well, I uh, have been in Hartford since 1980. I moved here when Jimmy Carter was still president. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, and I worked at Wadsworth Athenaeum for a long time as an exhibit developer and then I was uh, the director of the Landmark Society which got me involved in the neighborhood because the Connecticut Landmarks has a museum house there, the Isham Terry House, which you and I visited together. Wonderful And I place. just fell in love with that, that neighborhood. And so uh, I, after my time at the Landmark Society, I was the director of the New Haven Museum for a while. Mm -hmm. And now I'm a uh, cultural resource development and marketing consultant. My oh, what firm. does that mean? Well, it means you take old stuff and you help people polish them up and present them. Oh, see, I understand that <laughs> so language. There we go. <laughs> So that's, that's uh, what, what I love doing, and that's Wonderful. why I care about Old North. Wonderful. So, um, yeah, so I, I remember meeting you. I met you through a, a dear friend, Charles Barrow. He was bringing a, quite a few people together um, about um, Old North Cemetery. And at that time, we um, dubbed ourselves Friends of Old North Cemetery. And I got to follow you around on a few occasions and um, hear you share some of your vast knowledge on the um, Old North Cemetery. So share with us how you got involved in, in being intrigued by Old North Cemetery. Well, it's interesting. When I was at the Wadsworth Athenaeum, this is in the 1980s, mm -hmm. uh, I got involved as the uh, curator and uh, project manager for the restoration of the ancient burying ground on Main Street mm -hmm. next to Center Church. Mm -hmm. And we, we raised a million dollars and did a lot of work and I actually wound up writing a book about the, the project, about the restoration. And okay. it was n new technology that hadn't really been widely used. I worked with uh, uh, John Zito, who's a monument mm -hmm. maker down in uh, New Britain mm -hmm. Avenue. And uh, it was a great, great project. And I'd always been interested in it's a little embarrassing, but I think graveyards are fascinating because <laughs> I always call them one-stop shopping for art, history, and nature. Wow. And the neat thing is usually they're open. You know, mm -hmm. you don't have to make an appointment. The admission fee is pretty <laughs> cheap. <laughs> so I just started poking around. I mean, Cedar Hill Cemetery in the South End is mm -hmm. obviously an impressive national treasure, but what really excited me was when I started poking around Old North and Spring Grove, which is next door, mm -hmm. and then the Jewish burying grounds mm -hmm. and St. Patrick's, and exactly. really that whole neighborhood in North Hartford, that's kind of Hartford's memory bank. Mm -hmm. That's where the, the, the angels dance and the memories are still live, mm -hmm. and where, where we can go to commune with our history. Mm -hmm. So I, I love it up there. Well, for some of the, you viewers out there that might not necessarily know the name Old North Cemetery, Old North Cemetery is in the north end of Harford, as Bill stated, but it actually surrounds a, a general area, and that's um, between Pliny Street is in the backyard of Old North Cemetery. In the front yard is Sands Elementary School, and then you also have Mal Avenue and um, Mother's um, yeah, Mother Street that borders it. So it's right in most of our backyards if we live in that section of Clay Arsenal in the north end of Harford. Well, and our friend Charles Barrow, you know, he, when I, we first met, he was talking about the um, Clay Arsenal mm -hmm. and the uh, Clay Arsenal Improvement Society. This actually is the arsenal. This was demolished long ago, but this is what it takes its name from. This was the place that the state of Connecticut and the city had their 
uh, militia, you know, guns and... F now, was this next to the Sands this Elementary School? This was right where Sand is. It is, okay. Yeah, I remember it very well. And so there, it, there, are, there were a lot of, of course, the old Sim Street Jail. Mm -hmm. uh, they, not everything that was there has survived. And, and one of the interesting things about history is you can go back. There's fo good photographic records of a mm -hmm. lot of the landmarks. For example, this is a mansion house that, that was right there on the Belden House. And I remember when we were giving a graveyard tour, I forget whether it was your son or somebody that came mm -hmm. along, mm -hmm. and we were looking at this Thomas Belden monument. Yes, I remember. And he goes, is that who Belden Street was named for? Exactly. And it was just like a eureka moment. Yes, that's how places take their names exactly. from people. Mm -hmm. So every whether it's Pliny mm -hmm. or Mall, there's always a backstory behind exactly. place names. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So now... For those of us who live in the community, and for yourself, Bill, because you're there quite frequently, Old North Cemetery, although the city of Hartford has done some work um, in the cemetery as far as the mo some of the monuments, being the stones being repaired and things like that, it really is still, for most of us in the community, an eyesore. You know, there's not much going on in there. There's, you know, really, you know, the city of Hartford can do a little bit better at taking care of the property. And for years, Charles, you know, advocated for that. And we did, uh, were able to see some of that work come to fruition. Um, as somebody that really appreciates um, this cemetery um, and its history, what would you say still needs to be done to make this a really viable place to get more people attracted to its presence? Great question. And I think, you know, to, to give a, uh, the city credit, I think Mayor Segarra was the first public official in maybe a hundred years wow. to allocate serious money to the improvement of Old North Cemetery. Mm -hmm. And they've done hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of restoration work right. and landscaping improvements. They've got water through there. Mm -hmm. and, and the city is actually there were years, and this is what Charles and his mother were so concerned about, there were years where they didn't even get in there with a lawnmower, exactly. and it just looked appalling. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was awful. They're doing that now, and the place has never looked better, at least not in the not past in half the past, century. Yes. <laughs> All of that said, the key mm -hmm. to bringing these things to life and really make use, use of them is programming and activities. And I think that this Friends of Old North, mm -hmm. there's a Facebook site. Uh, I also uh, uh, post things about Old North in the historic Hartford mm -hmm. Facebook site. But the uh, key, I think, is to enliven that somehow mm -hmm. and to have more activities. I would love to have a dozen events a year happen in an Old North, whether they were uh, involved music or history tours or other kinds of workshops and activities, things that neighbors, visitors, and residents can enjoy. And I think that's not going to be that difficult, but we don't, we don't presently, you know, there's no nonprofit structure. And right. like anything else, if you need grants, you need some kind of organizational structure. Mm -hmm. And at present, the Friends of Old North is just, it's a Facebook site and it's an alliance of friends, mm -hmm. but we need to maybe go beyond that somehow. Okay. So I call you a walking museum when it comes to Old North Cemetery. So share with us some of the names that, that you know, if you took me on a tour for the first time, that I might be impressed to know that they're right there in my backyard. Yeah, oh, yeah. No, it's, it's, it's amazing. As I often say when I introduce tours there, Old North Cemetery is the only place in the city of Hartford where blacks, whites, Protestants, Catholics, Jews, famous, not so famous, we're all together mm -hmm. there. It is the ultimate place of inclusion. There are more African-American Civil War veterans buried in Old North Cemetery than anywhere in the country. And you look at, this is just a picture, this isn't anyone from Hartford explicitly, but we, you know, the story of, you know, the, some were freed Africans, others literally were contrabands who were escaping slavery, and the idea that black men participated courageously and actively in the journey of freedom during our Civil War. That, you know, just gives you goosebumps when you think of it. So there are all these stories related to the Civil War, but then just famous people. 
Uh, you know, Frederick Law Olmsted is mm -hmm. probably the most important figure in American environmental mm -hmm. history. He is the reason we have a National Park Service. He is the reason we have these wonderful urban parks like mm -hmm. Bushnell Park. Mm -hmm. uh, Daniel Wadsworth, the founder of the Wadsworth Athenaeum, is buried there. There are several governors that were buried there. Mm -hmm. Governor William Ellsworth was Prudence Crandall's attorney, mm -hmm. and he was the governor during the Amistad event. So there's all this African-American history, but there's also just these touching stories about Hartford's role in uh, developing the American Sign Language and the School for the Deaf and the founders of that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, you, 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 there's no end to mm -hmm. the stories. I remember you being intrigued by one of the stones there outside of all of these, you know, wonderful names that you just mentioned where we can tie directly to the history and, and sort of the early settlement of the city of Hartford. You also mentioned that there was one African American that was buried there and that the way they termed on his stone showed that he must have been of influence um, at that time. And I can't remember who the name that was on that stone. Well, no, there, there are several. There, mm -hmm. I, the one is this fellow, Jim Williams, who Jim was Williams. the head of the he was really the facilities manager at Trinity College. And okay. he was sort of iconic because this is when Trinity College was still located mm -hmm. at where the Capitol is now before okay. they moved to the South End. Oh, and wow. they called him that. Professor Jim. Mm -hmm. And he had apparently, if I've got this right, maybe he'd been a slave or a mm -hmm. servant in Aaron Burr's household. So okay. he'd met Thomas Jefferson. Mm -hmm. He had all these stories and he mm -hmm. was kind of an iconic figure in, in Trinity's history. But, but there is, I mean, the, the beauty of gravestones is that they carry their story, their record, their information right on their back. Mm -hmm. And one of my favorite little things to do in terms of research is you can now find the Hartford Current online. You can go online and find all the Hartford Currents up until the 1920, and it's all searchable. Mm -hmm. So if you have a name, you can type in that name and if they did anything, if they bought anything, if they advertised, if they were a merchant or if there was an obituary, mm -hmm. you can find a, quite, a, quite a bit of biography on okay. people very easily. Okay. Tell us a little bit about um, your, your um, business, um, Terra, Terra Firma. Yeah, Terra Firma Northeast is, as I mentioned, a, a cultural resource development and marketing company and I do media projects. Okay. I do uh, uh, special projects and uh, this past year I also do some social media. I was involved in the uh, 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 Connecticut Pride of Place series of community conversations in Stamford, New Haven, New London that the State Culture and Tourism Agency organized. Okay. I helped with the social media component of that. I am presently developing a Connecticut industrial history trail that will be a statewide where mm. people can go from place to place and learn about that facet. You know, the African American Freedom Trail, the okay. Connecticut yes, Freedom yes. Trail. Actually, Old North is cemetery is on, on the Freedom yes, Trail. That's one of these state created, Culture and Tourism Agency creates these trails and they help visitors to Connecticut discover the interesting things we have here. You, so. you refer to industrial, how does in, that tie Industry, in? you know, industry. Coal, okay. uh, uh, Cape Well, uh, uh, oh, okay. Winchester, All that's the industrial so. age. Those okay. were the great mm -hmm. stories. And you know, Connecticut, we are in what we now call kind of a post-industrial era, though certainly United Technologies and Pratt and & Whitney and uh, there are many, many businesses that make okay. things in Connecticut still, but it's not what it was. And mm -hmm. everywhere you go, you see, and it's sad, you see these mm -hmm. factory buildings that uh, are boarded up or they are no longer in use. And you think, mm -hmm. well, what's that about? Mm -hmm. Well, what that was about was that Connecticut made everything. I mean, they, they say that if you walked into a hardware store anywhere in America in 1880, Half the stuff on the shelves was made in Connecticut. Okay. So that's what we're, we're working on that. So um, you have a perspective. We, Friends of Old North, has a, have a perspective that you um, wrote up for us. Share with us some information about that perspective and what is your hopes in regards to it? Well, the, the idea of Friends of Old North is that we would develop an organizational structure. And this can be done either as a project with an existing nonprofit organization mm -hmm. 
you know, we've had conversations with Hartford Communities That Care and the Christian Activities Council and, mm -hmm. and whatever. It could be a standalone nonprofit mm -hmm. or it could be affiliated with an existing nonprofit. Right. It, to, to really uh, launch it, it would need a, uh, um, a standing committee or a board of directors that mm -hmm. were actively engaged in, as we put it, the programmatic elements, the tours, the activities, the events. And this is something Charles Barrow and, mm -hmm. and you and I have talked about, mm -hmm. all the different things you could do with a site that's that beautiful and interesting. Wonderful. We're going to get right back break. here in a minute. <laughs> We're going to take a break. Don't leave your spot. We'll be back in one minute. Welcome back for our second portion of For the Greater Good with Evelyn Richardson. I'm speaking with my special guest, Bill Hosley of Terra, Terra Firma. And we were just talking about um, some of the things that we see in the north end of Harford through the um, Old North Cemetery and things that we're hopeful that we'll be able to um, um, take place over there. So I, um, right now I'm gonna ask you, Bill, share with me the dynamics of the community that's in close proximity to the Old North Cemetery and how those things either complement what could be done in Old North Cemetery. And so um, when I'm, I'm, what I'm talking about is like the Isham Terry House, the Keeney, um, 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 how do they call it? Clock the Clock Tower. Tower and all of those things that also add rich history to the community. Well, and you know, any place you visit, are, they're defined by obviously the people who live there, but also by the institutions and the commercial establishments. Mm -hmm. And if you look at Old North, I, I, I mean, it, technically it's the Clay Hill, Clay Arsenal neighborhood, mm -hmm. and, and these mm -hmm. places all have names that mean something. <laughs> but I call the whole neighborhood Old North and the historic mm -hmm. neighborhood Old North because it is historic, and Old North Cemetery is kind of the crown jewel mm -hmm. of that neighborhood. But it's by far, it not by far, it's not the only one. And I think that what really excited me mm -hmm. is uh, when I uh, got involved through the Isham Terry House was realizing that we weren't just isolated in this oasis, that we were part of something vibrant and interesting. Mm -hmm. And my first year, the first annual meeting that we had when I was the director of Connecticut Landmarks, mm -hmm. we, we always had these annual meetings and then we'd do a field trip. Mm -hmm. And our field trip that year was all Old North. Okay. And we brought uh, busloads of people. We, obviously they went to the Isham House, but we got, um, uh, our friends at Keeney Clock Tower and the Keeney Park mm -hmm. Association to open up the clock tower. Mm -hmm. People could go inside. And of course, we went to Old North Cemetery. And I think any time I've ever brought people there, they've been dazzled. They said, I had no idea there was mm -hmm. this there. And look, we, we all know that when they built this, the highway, I-84, and they mm -hmm. dropped this, what I call the Great Wall of China down, that's separating the North End mm -hmm. from downtown, that it isolated to some degree economically uh, that part of the city. 
but in some ways it preserved things because mm -hmm. there wasn't a lot of development pressure. And, and for a lot of people uh, who may be interested in the arts or history or historic preservation, mm -hmm. North Hartford is a revelation. You go there and you go, wow, look at all this great mm -hmm. stuff. So that's, that's how I see it as, as, as a potentially a destination with several moving parts. Mm -hmm. And my little fantasy, I don't know if we will ever get there, but I would love to tell the, the story of the journey of freedom. It, you've been in the clock tower. Yeah. No, I haven't actually. You've never been inside? I've, oh, it's no, so cool. And the, the thing that's great about it, no. and this, this just shows you a little picture. This is an old picture. It shows a house that is no longer there. That's Capitol Prep. <laughs> that's approximately where Capitol Prep is. But the clock tower is in the background. Yes. And it was built by Walter and Henry Keeney in the 1890s to honor their mother. How do you not love that? But it's just a beautiful work of art that was designed by one of the architects that developed the Yale campus. Mm -hmm. And it is based on a 14th century French cathedral. I mean, it's got all this stuff going on. But the cool thing is when you go inside, you can, you can go up the stairs and there are three levels okay. where potentially we could have a gallery mm -hmm. of historical material that would tell the story of the neighborhood and its evolution. Mm -hmm. So there are lots of things when I talk about cultural resource development. It's just like Old North. You, you start from where you are, mm -hmm. but then the question is, how do I make this better? And in, usually it takes vision and money to do improvements. Right. But, but that's the idea for Old North. That's the idea for Keeney Clock Tower. I think the Isham House, they have made some improvements. Mm -hmm. And to me, the Isham House is every bit as interesting as the Mark Twain House. It's an incredible time capsule, and there's lots of neighborhood history embedded in it. Now, is the, um, the um, Keeney Clock Tower and the Isham Terry House from the same period? Mm, or not? Not really. The, okay. the Isham Terry House is the only Civil War vintage house. That was, mm -hmm. that was built on the eve of the Civil War in the 1850s. Okay. Keeney Clock Tower was built in the 1890s, so 90s. it was a generation later. Mm -hmm. And by the 90s, it's interesting, there was just a flood of immigration, and that, the neighborhood was just exploding economically. Who were the immigrants? What people? Jews, Italians, mm -hmm. um, Eastern Europeans, okay. and it, it's no accident that the Greater Hartford, the Jewish Historical Society of Greater Hartford has these wonderful bus tours they do, and it's mostly Jewish history, mm -hmm. but to that community, Old North is like, you know, this homeland. This That's is that. where the Jewish community's roots That's were right. in Hartford, mm -hmm. and there may not be many there today, but in the eight, 1950s mm -hmm. it, and into the 1960s, it was... Uh, a very racially, culturally mixed neighborhood with Italians, African Americans, some Hispanics, and large concentrations of, of Jew, Jews, and the schools were... So now the Keeney Clock Tower, um, is the, the family is the Keeneys, and is that the same Keeney Park family? Yes, yep, mm -hmm. yeah, and they, the, Henry and Walter Keeney made a lot of money, mm -hmm. and they were, if there was a Mount Rushmore for the most generous people that Hartford ever had, people who really stepped up their game mm -hmm. and did generous, wonderful things for the city, certainly Elizabeth Colt would be on that mountain. The Keeney brothers would. Daniel Wadsworth might. I mean, there have been a few personalities okay. in the history of this city that have really done big things. Okay. So let's talk about the area around with um, these two houses. Are you pronounce this Isham? So is it Isham? Doesn't matter. Or Isham, Isham. Isham. <laughs> Doesn't matter. So the Isham Terry House. We have there. We have the Keeney Clock Tower. We have the the um, Freedom Trail that runs straight through all of that, even up to um, Faith Congregation yes. Church, Old North Cemetery, and I believe um, the other church also. Um, A.M.E. Zion. A.M.E. Zion. And, then and Sacred Heart right behind. Sacred Heart, exactly. And now you have the public safety complex there. Um, and we're even talking about a baseball field possibly <laughs> sometimes. So what's your views on the baseball field? Well, well, again, to give the city credit, they've done, they not Stadium. only did the restoration of ancient Old North, mm -hmm. but they spent, I think, $70 million dollars to converting the old Board of Ed building into a public safety building. And these were some of the first investments in that neighborhood in half a century. Mm -hmm. Now, the baseball, um, would I like to see a baseball 
a, a field in the, the neighborhood? Of course. Mm -hmm. do, do I want to pay for it? I don't know. Mm -hmm. But it, it, the point is, more is more. And, mm -hmm. and I think there are things we can also do to capitalize on the commercial vibrancy that's all, mm -hmm. already there. I mean, one of the things... I had a really embarrassing experience, I'll uh -oh. tell you about. We were traveling in Michigan, mm -hmm. and I thought I was still in Hartford. We were actually in, uh, went to a restaurant, and I said, oh, great, they got jerk chicken on the, chi <laughs> on the, the menu. And let me tell you, white people don't know how to make jerk chicken. I just don't <laughs> think it's working. <laughs> it was really that, embarrassing. That's funny coming but, from you. But Jamaican food in this city, this is a culinary promised land, Hartford, mm -hmm. in terms of Jamaican. And I, I look at places like the Jerk Pit, mm -hmm. and these are, there's some great restaurants. Right I in had that neighborhood. to laugh because um, for all of you out there who know that I was born, raised, and grew up all of my life in the north end of Hartford, it takes Bill to come to Hartford and take me to the Jerk Pit, which I had, jerk pit, which, which I had never been to. So... <laughs> When he mentions that, I had to laugh. I was like, look, a little white boy come from the suburbs to bring me to a restaurant in the hood. <laughs> but, but there's Dunn's River good. and there are lots of in Scott's Bakery. I mean, you know, there really is are some great commercial establishments. Right. I can't say that if you were to ask me what a jeep thing is, I couldn't, I'm <laughs> not sure I could tell you. But these are this is part of the commercial vibrancy mm -hmm. that is... Very much alive, and I think that to the degree we make things happen there, it's yeah. it's about uh, m taking the things that are already there and making them sparkle. Right. If we get a baseball stadium in addition to that, maybe that's a win-win. But mm -hmm. the idea is to use the beauty and to s identify the things that are special about the place and mm -hmm. and 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 promote them. Exactly. So with all of that that we just discussed, that's taken place and and is planned for the future, how do we bring economic development to Old North Cemetery to, to actually be able to benefit from the possible more people will be coming? There's, with the public safety complex, there's hundreds of offices in there. Maybe, you know, get more people involved. Yeah, there's so much Absolutely. And look, I mean, Hartford is, it, it, it's not Boston. It's not Charleston, South Carolina. It's not Montreal or Newport, Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. But could we be doing more business and generating more revenue through tourism? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. This city has a billion dollars mm -hmm. invested in cultural resources, and mm -hmm. we could easily triple or quadruple the amount of business we do. And those are jobs. Those are opportunities. If I had a magic wand, Old North Cemetery uh, would, would have regular programs, not only special programs, but regular tours every weekend. And that whole neighborhood, like Nook Farm, where Mark Twain is, yes. like Main Street, where the Wadsworth and the Bushnell are, uh, it and the Butler McCook House are, uh, that neighborhood would be part an integral and essential part of the Hartford experience. And that experience is something we can take to the bank. Mm -hmm. So even going, um, let's go further up Albany Avenue from that point and I um, identify the John Rogers um, place. What you have anything to share with us well, on that site? I, I'm really anxious to know more about, I, I was friends with Barbara Aline, who is now mm -hmm. deceased, but she was such a great champion of the John Rogers heritage. And mm -hmm. I, I took a walking tour. She used to give walking tours of African-American history in the North End, and we learned about singers and, and uh, business entrepreneurs and some of these places that they lived in. It was, she was great at that. And th those are other things that can be done. Mm -hmm. But the J John Rogers was the first African-American historian mm -hmm. in Hartford. And he really, this is in the 1960s during the civil rights era. Mm -hmm. And he worked with my late friend, uh, Bill Warren, who was the director actually at the Harriet Beecher Stowe Center for, mm -hmm. for many years, in uh, developing this collection. And, and again, uh, what we need is a facility or a place where that story can be told, that material can be presented. At present, it's mainly an archive, mm -hmm. and it's like anything. It's like Old North Cemetery. It's great to have a wonderful collection, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, the key is how you present it mm -hmm. and, and, and making the effort to do that well. Mm -hmm. so. 
Okay. We have a, a couple of minutes left, and you have some photos here, and I always like listening to you tell a story based on some of the photos that you have. So I'm going to give you these couple of minutes, oh, and you geez. can just share with us and present some of your stuff well, with us. Okay. To give. Let's see what we've got. Well, look, it's... Uh, you know, more, more African-American history. This is a scene of Fort Wagner. And Fort Wagner was a, you could say that it was a public relations triumph for black soldiers during the Civil War because uh, mo most people of a certain age at this point will remember the younger Denzel Washington in the movie Glory. Yes. That was the story of Fort Wagner and the role that these African-American soldiers played in this um, uh, 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 assault in South Carolina. Okay. And uh, there are veterans of that event in mm -hmm. Old North Cemetery. Okay. There are, you can stand at their, it gives you goosebumps, you can mm -hmm. stand at their gravesite and talk about this story and link it directly to people who lived in the city mm -hmm. and were involved in it. Okay. Um, this is Frederick Law Olmsted. And we've talked about him already, but he, he, again, was a giant figure. People come from all over the world mm -hmm. to pay hom homage to him. Mm -hmm. And he was born in Hartford. He uh, worshipped and was an, he was a neighbor of the Reverend Horace Bushnell, okay. who was also buried in Old North Cemetery, right. and was influenced by Bushnell's teachings about urban planning and about the importance of environmental conservation. Mm -hmm. And Olmsted became the more famous personality, but he, he really is one of the giants in the American mm -hmm. environmental movement, and he's ours. He was okay. born here, he mastered his art here, mm -hmm. and he's buried here. Okay. And then this, is, uh, this isn't in Old North, but it's a monument that was designed by uh, uh, James Batterson, who was a monument maker, um, mm -hmm in the North End. His monument shop was right next to the Kinney Clock Tower and mm -hmm. he was um, actually more famous because he eventually became the founder 150 years ago this year mm -hmm. of the Travelers Insurance Company. But he was a monument maker and this was a monument that he was commissioned to build for to honor Thomas Galladay. Okay. And Thomas Galladay was the founder again of the American, what became the American School for the Deaf and that mm -hmm. is a legendary Hartford institution. Okay. So a lot of great figures in that um, cemetery right over there. Yeah. Wonderful. So I'm hoping that eventually we'll get to see Friends of Old North get this thing driving and moving. So if anybody out there got some funds to help us make it happen, you need to give Bill a call or give myself a call. Bill, you want to share some contact information before well, we go? Well, my, my uh, um, um, uh, Historic Hartford on Facebook is probably the best way to reach okay. me. I also have an email address, W-N-H-O-S-L-E-Y at S-N-E-T dot net. Thank you for joining us here on accesstv.org. You were watching For the Greater Good with Evelyn Richardson. Have a blessed day.